70 percent of pass pro from a running back standpoint is uh knowing the guy that that's blitzing i think the next you know 10 to 15 percent is is literally this guy uh beating him to the line as simple as it gets and I, i'm i'm I don't mean to sound like elementary with you guys, but I just coached it this whole spring, you know, being here for my my first year of spring. As long story short, if you meet this guy seven yards from the quarterback, you got seven yards room for error. Okay, if you meet him three yards in front of the quarterback, you only got three yards room for error. So the most important thing, especially like this uh, Kanoa, he's about 5'8", probably a little less than 200 pounds. The only chance you have against a, you know, a division one linebacker is getting up to the line and forcing him to have a one way go. OK, and so I'll show the clip and I'll kind of show you what we work on in this drill. OK, so he knows obviously there's only one defender. He's identified the pressure. OK, now the, the thing we want, we want to get to the line and we want to make this guy feel like he only has a one way go to the quarterback. So I'm the quarterback standing here. We Number one, we don't want to make him feel confident in a bull rush. That's another reason to get to the line. If you get to the line, he's not going to feel like he can bull rush, even if you're undersized or running back seven yards to the quarterback. All right. Also, for our own peace of mind, we want to force him to only be able to run the hump and not have an opportunity. So we want to close him off with our with our uh, with our body position. So the position he's in right now is what where we want to be. Okay. You never want to, you shouldn't be able to run a straight line to the sideline, meaning if our feet are this way, we give him a short edge both ways. Okay, so we do want to force him, invite him to run the hump, but we also don't want to have our feet perpendicular to the sideline and, and where he can bend the corner. You know, old Dwight Freeney, some of those really good DNs in the league, they could bend that corner on us. We don't want that. Okay, and so basically, our advantage in pass pro, number one, knowing that guy's there, beat him at the line. We want to we want to create a foot to foot battle. All right. So meaning I want to punch and I want to run him outside the outside the pocket. The quarterback may have to step up at times, but we never want to force the quarterback to have to work laterally because of our block. OK, so we don't want him to cross our face and then wash him because now the quarterback's got to escape laterally to avoid our block. All right. So I'm kind of giving you a lot of coaching on the front end and I'll kind of go go through and show you. OK, there's ugly things that we like. This is maybe like last week. We're still working on his hands and punching and all that. He's crossing over. OK, but to me, you get it. You have a chance if you get to the line. OK, and then that ultimately is where we want to be making him run around the quarterback. OK, here's uh, at BYU. Same drill. OK, so notice he's tracking him, tracking him. And now he gets his hips in that position. OK, so once again, as a defender, if the quarterback's standing here, OK, I'm not, I don't trust that my bull rush can get there. OK, so we've eliminated the bull rush. His feet, if you see here, I don't trust that I can go underneath without getting washed down. So I've eliminated two moves from him. The only thing he feels like he can do to get to the quarterback is run the hump. We've neutralized his skill set. Now we're going to go foot to foot battle, punch and run him around the quarterback. Because okay, so, so you you see him there tracking him, tracking him, getting to that position. We want to punch. And then the last part of it is, is once we track in our body position, our feet, I use the term sewing machine feet. All of us older coaches, we, we probably grew up seeing, you know, our grandma, our mom with a sewing machine. So that makes a lot of sense. It's crazy to me. I, I don't under, they all under, still understand it in 2021. So I'm going to keep holding on to it as long as I can. Probably in about five years, I got to change it. But sewing machine feeds basically saying, I want us hot on contact. We shouldn't look like offensive linemen when we, when we engage in a block because we're not sturdy enough. Offensive linemen, they can lumber, you know, the drill work they do, you know, where they want heavy feet. We're, we don't we don't have 300 pounds behind us to be able to do that. We got to use our feet and run these guys the way we want to take them. OK, so we're I always tell these guys when we do drill work, we want to exaggerate technique. So that's this kid's one of the best pass blockers I've ever coached. And he's exaggerating, getting there, getting to the spot, punch, running his feet, making him run the hump. OK, and I, I like showing it. So this is here, Oregon State. This is uh, BYU. Here's when I was at Arizona doing the same drill work. OK, same thing finding them, getting to the spot. Once again, if we meet him at the line, we've neutralized two of his, his opportunities, options to get to the quarterback. He's not bull rushing from that far. He, our foot's here, okay? We can close the door on it if he tries to go there. He's thinking in his head, all right, I don't, usually we're blocking guys that don't work a lot of pass pro. So in his mind, okay, this is the path of least resistance. Now we got him where we want him. Let's punch him and run him out of there. Once again, sewing machine feet, okay? so. 
now we'll see how it translates um, to game. Okay, so once again, going back, the number one most important thing in pass pro is, is understanding structurally who our threats are. So this is a game week where we knew we were playing Liberty here. We knew, all right, hey, they give us the cat look um, from the boundary, but they like to run this inverted cat. We called it fire blitz. They bail him and then they bring this guy off the C gap. So he's he's tuned in, he's clued in to the, you know, what the threats are. He sees him running down. Now, this is the picture we want to have as running backs. We want to look like we're if in a perfect world, we want to be a part of that. Okay. We want to meet that guy at the line. He's doing a great job. Notice his body position here too. He neutralized this guy um, his as a threat. If you look at him right here, okay, he, I, I thought he may have opened the door just a little for him. Okay, but when he gets to contact, he can't bull rush. That's five yards between him and the quarterback. If he goes underneath, our feet are in a position where we can wash it down, but we want to make him feel like he can get to that quarterback. As soon as he does, we latch on, run him out the picture. Quarterback never knew that they brought that guy off the edge. Once again, understanding our uh, the potential threats. So we knew going into the game, they like to do this front. This will be our guy. You know, we, we were responsible for these two, depending on how it played out. OK, they end, he ends up going inside. So we pick up the the edge rusher. Once again, he's in the line. He's a, he's an extra lineman, so to speak, as far as where he's at making that block. And then his body position right there, he's funneling him. So you can see really, I'll show it from the tight, tight copy, but the defender's like in his head, he really, and we talked about all week, 54 loves the bull rush. So that was even more incentive to get, on, get to the line. He forced him, he took away the bull rush because of our distance. Okay, didn't allow him to go underneath, funneled him outside, okay? And now you see this guy's a load too. You'll see it from the end zone. But this is why, to me, why it's so important to have this, this uh, coaching get into the line because this guy, 54, is a, he's, a, he's a mean dude. And you'll see, like, we got to the line, we funneled him, and we still had to hang in there. But here's, here's like, exactly what I was talking about earlier. You got – when you meet him here, you have five yards – five yards of room for error in your technique and your, your lack of strength when you meet him at the line. If he were to make this block right here, two yards away from the quarterback, we're either giving up a pressure or a sack. And so there, this is like the drill tape I always show our guys is like right here, it wasn't pretty. I mean, he got the job done. He, he did the two most important things. Like I said, it's about 85% of pass pro, identifying the guy and getting up to that line. Forcing to have the one way go, could have got his right hand inside. I mean, these are things that we're coaching up after, but we're not coaching up on a sack or a pressure. And so we continue to develop their path, you know, their their technique and become more proficient over the years. But if if they can do this, any any of a guy from a freshman up to a senior, they can be in it on a first and ten and pick up a base a base pressure. Okay, so here's one uh, one or two more. Excuse me, one or two more. We knew twenty seven is coming off the edge. Okay, get to the line once again. You see him. Body position. Now, the like I said, it also gives us a peace of mind. And we've been working here with these guys uh, just being here my first spring. Notice how calm he is on the move, on his inside move. When you know you've cut off his inside and and dis, you know uh, disallowed his bull rush, you don't take the bait when they try to do this inside out. You wait for it. You know it's inevitable. You go punch and run. Okay? We just saw this guy just got drafted second round. I, I was pretty adamant, let's keep this dude clean. We're really good when he's in the game, okay? So I also like how the quarterback having a peace of mind, okay, to know anytime we get a red edge rusher from the running back, I know how he how he's going to block that guy. I want us consistent across the board. Whoever is in our room, this is the way we want to block this guy. I don't want him making him run a hump. Another guy's a let the quarterback cross his face guy. Another guy's a getting bull rushed into the quarterback guy. We're all body position, make him run a hump across the board in our room. Okay. I'll uh, kind of speed up. So here's the same drill. Add another guy. Okay. But we're still working to the line. All right. So we're just adding a, another potential threat. This is just uh, here in, during spring ball. Okay. The up, so when we're coming from distance, okay, I tell them it's like uh, any defensive coaches on here, you talk speed to power. It's really the same principle when in pass pro. You want to cover that distance as much as you can. And we get in about that two yard radius between you and the defender. That's when you start, you want to come to balance and you, you want to transition your feet through that defender. Your feet should really never stop. They should slow down. You should become, you know, go from long stride to short, short stride but they should never completely stop. 
So right here, did a pretty good job cut, closing the ground, coming to balance. I just don't like that his feet stop, and that's why he's crossing over a little bit. Okay, he's so right now. He, he's a bigger running back. I was just focused on getting this guy to the line with good pad level on contact. Now, this last couple of days, we've been working on, hey, we need that sewing machine feet, man. That's, he's relying on his strength a little bit too much. What I can live with, getting there and then forcing this guy to run the hunt with his body position. And we'll continue to just clean up his game. He watched plenty of film and we'll just keep getting a little bit better and better. Okay, here's just an, kind of another vari variation of the drill. This guy bails and now we got to trigger our hips. And this is, you'll see it um, when we go to the three man version, but see how he, we're just over exaggerating that hip turn and getting in that body position. Okay, so once again, funnel him, making him run the hump. Let's not give him a short edge. He does, I don't love his feet here. Okay, but he's trying to get it, get it accomplished, punch and then run, make him run the hump. That's what we're looking for. Okay, here's another uh, angle, one from a little tighter angle. You wanna cover ground, come to balance. Okay, I like that. Come to balance. I like his foot transition right here. So he went speed to power. His feet never stop. I like him to stay a little more attached. So where we're working on with him, his feet are pretty good. He's a he's got good feet in everything. Pass game, run game, whatever. He's just got good feet. So now what we're working on with him is getting those hands inside. You see his punch isn't great, but once again, I can put him in there on first and ten. I'm I can trust that he'll go at least keep this guy away from our quarterback until we're while we're in the process of cleaning his game up and his, his technique up. Okay, here's here's another one um, here. So once again, identify the threat. We know this guy's coming off the edge. All right, we know that's our, our, def our defender. We wanna cover ground, cl close the distance. I thought he could have closed a little more distance, honestly. Okay, he's, he's just, I guess he's saying this guy's path so wide, let me not go overdo it and, and give him a short edge. I like what he's doing. To me, that's that's as good as pass pro as you get right there. Punch him, run him out. Quarterback never knew that they brought a blitz off the edge. That's that's now we get you the next play. We go hand you the ball and you're not beat up. You know, you don't you don't got a stinger and you don't got a concussion protocol, none of that. You know, we're just coming in there and, and keeping the quarterback clean. And I, I think that's what the standard should be for for us as college running backs. All right, so here's – we knew they like to bring the wheel C off the edge. Okay, does a pretty good job meet him at the line. I like his body position. Once again, as we're working, we're funneling him. He's like, ah, five yards away. I'm probably not – and this is a bigger guy. Probably not going to bull rush. I don't really want to go with the inside move because he'll wash me. Let me try to run a hump. Running backs, his technique's not great. But once again, 85% is get, knowing the guy, getting to the line, getting that body position. Hands are all over the place. Feet are dead, hips are not great, but he's washing them out. Quarterback never knew that that guy came off the edge. And that's, you know, that's one of the better defenses you'll, you'll ever go against as a coach.